All right, so greetings, family. Um, we're going to go through a um, conference call based on a conference call presentation that I set up to make everything uh, more uniform and organized. But for the most part, uh, all of the information that uh, we've talked about is still just there right there on our website, Africa, for the Africans.org. Uh, so most of what you're gonna, we're going to go through, we'll just point to the reference on where the information is uh, based on the PDF and the PowerPoint conference uh, called uh, presentation that was sent. Uh, it's 31 slides. We're not going to go through all the slides. It's my general presentation I usually do if I'm traveling and moving around and sharing information about uh, Africa tourism and investment. The latest uh, email I was sent um, have um, it's uh, more updated. Um, uh, before it was just uh, the Ghana information. I added the South African information and then it just kind of added more balance uh, to the presentation. So the goal is to just go through it and go through as much as the slide as possible, but at the same time to send it to everybody so everybody can just go through it and just be more familiar with the full process of what our presentation is about as far as Africa tours and investment. And also there's a conference call uh, email that is sent um, through the mail to, through MailChimp. It's an uh, email uh, service or email marketing. Uh, so sometimes, unfortunately, that goes to your junk mail. I usually try to send that out uh, anywhere from 7 to 10 days before the conference call, which is usually set for the second Sundays of the, the month. And then usually on the fourth Sundays, I usually talk more about repatriation and investments and whatever projects that we have going as far as African dance for communities. And then, all, then uh, also all the conference calls that we do, um, the goal is to edit them and get them out in a few days to where you can just re-listen to the details or for those who didn't make the call can go back and play it back. And everything is all in the same sequence where most of what we're doing is just repeating a lot of the same information or just expanding on the details as far as uh, what we're talking about. And the goal is just to provide as much information as possible um, just to get everybody clear about the, the flow of business as far as tours and Africa tours in general. And also, uh, it's uh, set up to where after all of the, the details, for those who have questions or those who want to talk, I'm available throughout the week uh, to get things going. And for those who are sending payments in, just give me anywhere from the same day to one to two days to get you a to get you a tour receipt. Uh, if you pay through PayPal and things like that, it would automatically generate your receipt. But we have a receipt slash invoice that we keep up with all of the transaction. And my goal is just to get that out to everybody as soon as possible. So I have a few people for tours in South Africa that um, I have to update and get you for South Africa 2020. Uh, so now we're doing four journeys. I have two for Ghana, one this year, December, one for next year, May, and South Africa this year, next year. So those are the four journeys that I'm working on that we're going to be talking about. And the goal is just to communicate with everyone and just get it all done at the same time. Uh, so uh, whenever you're communicating, you have a list of questions, just, uh, you can just send certain emails, that way you can just get a written response, or we can just answer certain questions that you write down uh, based on your calling. So all of this is just, to, like, like I was saying, just to provide you the much information, uh, especially before you make a decision, and then communicate with you continuously while we're working through the process of doing business with you. Uh, so. I'm a person that's available seven days a week. Uh, only time I'm not available um, as efficient is when I'm on tour uh, with the months I gave you um, uh, based on our schedule. So in that, that situation, the best thing uh, you know we can really do is this. When I'm on tour, you send an email or a WhatsApp message, then I'm able to communicate with you a little more efficient. If you leave a voicemail and things like that, I uh, won't be able to just get to that voicemail if you send a, t a regular text message while I'm out in Ghana. Uh, so. Those are the, the flow of uh, where we have things organized. That way we can just be as efficient as possible. What I'm going to do is just uh, open up the PowerPoint uh, presentation. And I'm, I want to make sure that there's, hopefully everybody have the, the uh, PowerPoint presentation. It was attached to the last few emails that were sent in reference to the conference call. and was specifically titled Presentation. 
And for those who literally did not get an email for the conference call or so on, just please just send me an email and let me know that we make sure that we have the right email for you in the system on the spreadsheet and also in the email marketing. I saw this presentation listed as Africa for the Africans, Tours and Investments, uh, Opportunities in Traveling to Ghana and South Africa for Repatriation and Building a Cooperative Business Enterprise or Business Enterprises. All right, so the first set of uh, parts of the presentation, starting from slide number two, uh, talks about us, Bomani's introduction. All right, so family, I was born in uh, Kingston, Jamaica in October 31st, 1977, so I'm currently uh, 41 years old. My family moved to Brooklyn, New York in December of 1988, and while I was in uh, New York, I was in uh, the sixth grade, and once I got to high school, I went to Transit Tech High School, studied electrical installation and practice. Also, during those four years, I was in athletics, uh, track and field, uh, played soccer for four years. I finished uh, high school. Uh, I have it right here. It shows five years in the U.S. Navy, uh, closer to four and a half, um, and did uh, a few years in the uh, reserve. So let's put um, this uh, five years U.S. Navy uh, aircraft uh, technician. And that was the whole time I was in the Navy. That was my craft. Uh, Aircraft uh, technical systems, uh, which is what we call this uh, an electronic technician, uh, but that's a specifically more so on aircraft systems. Once I, um, I finished um, you know, finishing the Navy, um, I was there also stationed in Virginia, and, and uh, there's a school called Aviation Institute of uh, Maintenance, and so I used uh, my um, education resources to apply for that uh, technical school, and I uh, worked on getting my uh, FAA certified aircraft um, maintenance technician uh, certification or airframe or FAA airframes and power plants aircraft technician. Uh, so that's one of that's, those are two of set of uh, technical certification I've gotten over the period of time. Another one is a FCC general radio telephone license electronic technician. So that's without getting into a bunch of things that uh, deals with. Um, uh, ships uh, deal with um, electronic system, and it covers just a um, lot of things that uh, you'd add on to your aircraft technician certification if you want to do more advanced uh, aviation. Yeah. Next set of certifications I have is um, which is up the last um, uh, within the last um, ten years, and these are more newer than other certification. A, uh, A plus, network plus, and security plus IT technician. So I spend most of our time just uh, doing the business that we do, which is uh, business administration and also computer system. As, and as far as um, business administration, I studied at I studied at Emory Ridge Aeronautical University, and most of what we're studying was um, business administration and management. And that is one of um, that that is an incompleted incom degree. Um, it was one of those situations where you just realize that it's best to invest your money in your business and learn and train yourself versus depending on certain things, not putting any anything down as far as um, education system, as far as degrees. Uh, that was just my situation. So on the PowerPoint side, it's incomplete uh, at a senior level. So people may say that, why not finishing things? But I'll spend the last uh, 15 years traveling to Africa and just building a craft from the ground up and building my uh, IT technical career uh, based on just want to have more flexibility after this, you know, getting out of the Navy, getting a certification and working for the airlines, uh, doing the same type of work, aircraft uh, technical uh, support. Uh, so that's a brief uh, introduction that does uh, get you right to the point as far as this direct background. Now, once I started started in the field of aircraft uh, maintenance, I was here in the Atlanta area, working for the airport, and some of my first connection to you know, to to just stepping outside of that box um, is just connecting to a group of uh, good brothers uh, connected with here in Atlanta that was studying about the roots and culture, and you know we started doing study groups and just learning about. Know, connecting to our ancestors and learning about all that, all, our, all of our incredible history and just kind of filling the gaps of what we know 
and didn't know and things like that. Uh, so I started traveling. Uh, uh, the first country was Senegal in March 2004, and that was uh, few, with a few co-workers um, here in Atlanta from, um, that worked with me at, at a Delta Airlines company. And so with exception of that, I paid for a tour to uh, Egypt with a uh, known scholar, Dr. Renoko Rashidi. Uh, so those were really my first experience on the African continent. Uh, Senegal was a little more uh, interesting because it, you know, part of that focus was, was to learn about our stolen African ancestors that was housed at the island called Gori Island right off uh, Dakar, Senegal. Uh, so that really just connected me into some of the information I was studying about our roots and culture and what happened to our ancestors. And then Egypt is just, you know, phenomenal. You know, you're talking about the greatest of what our, you know, that's still standing as far as our, our history and, and culture and just the great science of just the world. And, you know, so that right there, that is just like a foundation. And you know, Senegal was, in a modern day sense, more impactful because of, uh, it reminded me of being in Jamaica and it also reminded me of just, um, you know, current uh, situation is just more of this an upbeat modern uh, African country, and Senegal since then has just the country has grown incredibly, uh, one of the uh, top five African countries. Yeah. But throughout that uh, journey, um, the, the following year, I went to uh, South Africa in May, Senegal, South Africa, and Kenya in um, 2005, uh, and that's um, November. Uh, the Gambia in May of 2006. And then the Africa for the Africans tours and investment energy kicked in when I started our first tour in December 2006. So from 2005 to now, it's been 15 years. And uh, once I did the first tour to Ghana in December 2006, I did an annual October all the way up to October, from October 2007 and 2008, which was then the biggest group, all the way up to October 2016. And then started doing uh, two tours a year, uh, May and November, for 2017 uh, and 2018, and now in 2019 we have um, tours to Ghana every May and December, and then the South Africa days, the, the, the November dates that we have now is a changeover from what we used to do in Ghana, and then using those dates around Thanksgiving, which is give people flexible time, but since our South Africa tour is a little shorter, it's easier to work those days in the November, and then at Ghana for December. Uh, so that's, um, and in other countries that I've traveled to, um, Ghana, Togo, uh, Togo and Benin, which is in 2009, 2017, um, which makes country number seven and eight, and then Ethiopia, May 2017, country number nine, and I also went to uh, Brazil, which is not a part of Africa, obviously, but uh, one of the greatest connection country that deals with African culture and deal with what happened to our still African ancestors. So uh, most of these, uh, all of the current Africa for African stories that I mentioned to you, I have all of them on YouTube. Like literally all of those stories I've taken from 2006 to now. Uh, the other ones are on like DVDs and videotapes. And so I believe heavily in us documenting our journey and showing our brothers and sisters showing them the history, the culture, and also showing that we are you know, you know, we are still interested and in want to know what, what what's going on with our people and want to connect and do business and things like that. So this, these journeys are molded to where it's it's taken on a life as far as this, a lot of networking, a lot of connection, a lot of introduction, and trying to get the best of us together to just do, you know, wonderful things and build a future that we can just build with us and look out for us. All right, uh, next slide. Uh, about us, uh, what I have is this, uh, this is slide number four, about us, uh, but my introduction three of three. I have the tour video highlights link and all the photo galleries, uh, Facebook link. Then I have a few group pages, uh, Facebook group, uh, Ghana May tours, South Africa tours, and Ghana December tours. And the only other thing beyond that, uh, once we get you know, a few months um, closer to the tour, all the people that are uh, coming on the journey, we just usually just create a a WhatsApp page and a share. Um, just introduce ourselves that way just as a start until we get to the airport where we can all meet and connect and then so on. Uh, so all of these things are designed just to share information and just to connect all of us. Okay. So this also let's talk about uh, our upcoming tours. Ghana, December 24th, 2019 to January 4th, uh, 2020, and then May 25th to June 5th, 2020, 
Then South Africa is November 22nd to December 2nd, 2019, and November 20th to the 30th, 2020. Uh, so slide number um, five, um, and this is All right, so I got another about us, and this is our foundation and mission. So Africa for Africans was organized by myself, Bomani Taima, on October 1st, 2006, in Atlanta, Georgia. And I'm the, uh, I'm the uh, tour leader, organizer, and this director of business operation, and I have a lot of different people that I've worked with that do the different parts of the tour, from transportation to a hotel to even our folks at group booking at the airlines. Uh, so all of us uh, work together to pull this off and make it work. Yeah. So my, uh, my definite ins inspiration for this business operation is Marcus Garvey's philosophy and self-reliance and um, Malcolm X's philosophy on self-determination uh, slash our study groups on Africa history, repatriation, and nation building. So just that energy has brought me into this world to where I'm committed to this, us organizing ourselves and just literally you know, making a strong move to build a future in Africa. It's a lot easier now as time has gone by because you know, before it wasn't a whole lot of strong interest as far as living and doing business. Now people have always wanted to travel to the African continent, but now there's more and more reasons and energy that are brought out into where people are just more open to it. And one of the biggest thing I would say is this the African continent is completely peaceful. You hear about mass shootings and psychotic stuff going on and literally and the best thing to do is like while you're there in the country, you listen to the news and look at the paper and then you'll kind of see what goes on in the country and then you're going to look at it like, wow, this is little to, to not much as far as crazy stuff going on. But here, as soon as you turn the news on, five, seven, ten people dead in this state, that state, uh, and this is like whatever is in the water, it's just gone, people have just gone mad and things are just getting worse. But at the same time too, uh, we as a people, I don't ever feel like it was ever our destination to be here forever. Unfortunately, even though some people may just explain that our people have been here for you know, forever in generations, which I do understand that. But um, and there's, I don't really have any variation of how long some of us were here and some of us weren't here. Uh, but what I'm presenting is a great opportunity for us to figure a lot of things out and connect with the energy in the African continent. Uh, you've seen different uh, African governments all over the Caribbean and different parts. They're trying to just reach out to other parts of our folks who may not necessarily you know, know about what's going on, which is just an energy of Pan-Africanism for us as a people to organize ourselves and build a future Africa that's going to represent African people you know, in the diaspora and also um, on the continent. All right, let me just uh, skip through some of these slides. That way we just get this going. All right, the vision statement, uh, about us two of four. Our name Africa for Africans was taken from words spoken by the Honorable Marcus Garvey over 90 years ago. Uh, that, that taught us that African people are all over the diaspora are one people and that the continent of Africa belongs to us. Our mission is to reconnect our people with the motherland, Africa. Our main tool to accomplish this is through tours. This has proven to be the most effective way to dispel the myths and negative propaganda that keeps Africa divided. Uh, so when you, you know, when I was working on this in 2006, you know, that's literally how I, I saw it. I, I felt like, you know, not saying that, it's, that just having a bunch of videos and market in Africa is going to solve the problem, but as far as getting us interested in wanting to do more than, you know, to travel to the country, you know, it takes us going a little more deeper and building strong representation of repatriation, which is the stolen Africans returning to the land of the ancestors. Uh, so business conference and us connecting and working with different uh, repatriation communities and then just taking people around and connecting them with different uh, groups of people. And you know, those things, yeah, as definitely makes all the difference. And then the more of us join this party or join this fight, a lot more change. Uh, we see Asians and different um, variations of um, Europeans, or, or, or I should say different groups of Asians and Europeans just heavily invested on the continent. 
and they're looking at it as the final frontier of the world that we live in, the last great place to develop or last great continent or body of land to develop and invest in. And you know, people like myself and other people just doing what we can do is best to to share that vision that we see that we have to get involved and not put ourselves in a situation where, you know, like in America where we own little to not much as far as you know the money system of how things run here. Um, you know, some of us have business and things, but when you talk about corporations, when you talk about certain industries, and you talk about certain entity and you know, certain dominance in the world, those are things that we lack. Uh, but we have a whole continent that uh, is growing fast and developing, and some of us can get in where we fit in, and others can kind of organize as far as groups. So th this uh, energy is just really just to share as much of that as possible. All right, uh, vision statement, uh, this is three or four. We see Africa as the only viable option for the future survival of African people. And this position is supported by the world's dependency on natural resources in Africa, which are currently being controlled by non-Africans. These are just information that, you know, we're just going to just support how we feel about what we feel about and, and why we see it that way. This is my ongoing presentation, um, and it just, you know, keep the energy going as far as, you know, foundation being built and then keeping it strong. Right, vision uh, getting started. Right. So in order for Africa to thrive and survive, the war being waged against us globally, we must just build our home base of power. So going to countries like Ghana and South Africa, is just trying to just harness as much energy as possible to to start out first to say, hey, let's find out more about this specific African country and then see where we can connect. And the foundation of the information I have is this um, a website where you sort of build the details and then while you're on the web, when you, once you're on the website, a lot of information on the main menu and then also on the left side of the actual website itself, just all of the links and details you need. All right, so I got a different set of slides now and uh, we're going to go into the tour view. So slide number nine. Um, Talking about all inclusive tour package 103 full accommodations. And so, this is general for this, all of our tours. It includes trans transportation and tours throughout the country, daily exercise and meditation based on who's volunteering and who we have on staff, uh, daily continental breakfast and gourmet dinners, uh, naming ceremony and ancestral celebration. That's specifically for Ghana, no, nothing on that uh, for South Africa. Hotel accommodation, double occupancy, and repatriation investment conference such networking, which is only specifically for Ghana. And as we begin to build energy in South Africa, we'll be able to connect more as far as uh, investments and business. And all the tours include all entrance and access to all sites and activities, uh, certified English speaking tour guides uh, and crew. All right, so just give a kind of clarity of the, the tour packages. And also, this is explained better when you click on our website, africaforeafricans.org, and then click on the relative tour that you're interested in, which regardless of whatever it is, and you're going to see a tour overview. So what I'm going to be talking about in the next uh, few slides are the tour overview uh, for both Ghana and South Africa, and then just giving a breakdown. All right, so the Ghana 12-day itinerary, it's two days of travel uh, to and from Ghana, um, and uh, four days in Accra and Great Accra, three days in Kumasi in the Ashanti region, and then uh, three days in Cape Coast, Elmina in the Central region. And so that's a breakdown to where we take a tour bus and we literally leave from Accra, go to Kumasi, and then Cape Coast, and then in some cases you may leave from Accra to Cape Coast and go to Kumasi and back to Accra. So it's kind of organized in a triangle when you look at the actual uh, Ghana map. There's two packages, the full accommodation, which includes flights uh, from the U.S. to Accra, uh, which is uh, 3700 And once you get closer to the tour, we may not have access to get you a ticket. Uh, and in that, that case, then you can pay for the, the, uh, the full accommodations without the flights, which is 2500 which will cover you for everything on the ground. Um, especially like in the December tour, we may say that only have tickets, we can get you tickets from New York or... Or Atlanta, but naturally, if you reach out to us ten months to a uh, year before you're traveling and you pay a deposit, 
wherever you need a flight from, we can reserve the flights right away. Uh, that way it guarantees your flight from there. Uh, but for the most part, we just try to let everyone know that we can accommodate you from wherever you are. But that's the stipulation, and especially for December when it gets closer. And if the flight price increased to where we can't accommodate you, we can let you also know that uh, we can accommodate you based on you just paying the difference of the flight increase. So all those are those communication that you know, me and the individual will communicate with and be clear on via email, and it was, it's confirmed in your, your receipt slash invoice for every transaction you make. All inclusive tour package uh, for South Africa is 10 days, uh, two days uh, travel, five days in Johannesburg, and three days in Cape Town. Round trip flights from Johannesburg and Cape Town is included in both both packages. Uh, so full accommodation plus flights is uh, 3,700. And we have a sequence that goes from Atlanta to Johannesburg. And if we can't accommodate you for that direct flight there, then we have a, another uh, setup that leaves from Amsterdam. So example, if you're leaving from uh, New York, uh, we can accommodate you from New York to Amsterdam to Johannesburg, but if you commit earlier and then we know exactly who we need to order tickets for, we order it ahead of time, then we can get you on that route from New York to Atlanta to Johannesburg. Uh, the difference in these situations is the Atlanta flight will get in earlier and the Johannesburg flight will get in later. So um, over the years of doing these tours, you find yourself having to make arrangements because some people are, may not necessarily be able to get on the same flight route as, as everybody else, which is a simple thing. In Johannesburg, it's simple because once I get the first group to the airport, from the airport to the hotel, then I'm going back with a driver like a few hours later to get everybody else. And in Ghana, um, if someone gets there before us or after us, um, then uh, we have a crew at the uh, the hotel, the Micklin, to uh, to pick you up, and they'll have the sign up with your name on it once you walk out the airport exit, and you'll see the signs with everybody else signing. Uh, so those are the things that uh, we have organized. And I'm going to go through a few more slides and then just stop. Uh, this is just the general tour information, and I'll be going between South Africa and Ghana, and as you'll see it in the slides once we change. So now we're talking about the actual overview of the tour. I'm going to go through the three different parts of Ghana. Um, so it's a tour overview, one of three destinations, Accra, Lagon, and Avery Mountains. So while we're there for the four days in Ghana, uh, we look into the first night. The first day won't do much. Uh, it's just us getting into the country and then it's late. But the next uh, three days, we're literally on a full tour day for the next three days. So we'll be doing the, the city tour, including Black Star Square, Independence Arch, the Art Center, W.E.B., Du Bois Center, George Padmore Library, Kwame Nkrumah Memorial Park, right? University of Ghana Campus Tour, uh, century old a Avery Botanic Gardens, uh, Rita Marty Foundation and Studio. We just driving by and stopping by this the view from outside. Uh, Trinity Home Fund Foundation uh, Orphanage in Tutu, and which is a school. So we go there to do uh, school supplies and financial donation, uh, repatriation, and cooperative investment, networking, gathering, and conference. And then the uh, other main highlight on here that I don't have on this uh, slide is. The uh, Ancestral Memorial Wall, which is a part of the new part of our, our third tour day in um, Accra, which focuses on 90 plus youth sized portraits of our ancestors to tell a full story of Africans and deaths from Africans on the continent. And while we're here in Accra, we'll be staying at the Mikkelen Hotel, and that's the same for Kumasi, uh, so it's the same link. All right, and uh, this is uh, destination two of three, Kumasi. Uh, so while in Kumasi, uh, we're going to drive to Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. We do a full city tour. Uh, you're going to see the statue of Prempe, Okomo, Anache, um, Kumasi Fort, City Center, and the Royal Museum or Mausoleum or the Ashanti Palace, uh, which we'll be able to go to, enjoy a full presentation, and also this enjoy the shopping at the culture center and you have wonderful lunch at Ike's uh, Cafe uh, which is just not only just lunch but it's just nice little relaxed environment to just get a feel of Kumasi and just kind of just focus. 
Uh, now, um, while we're in Kumasi, we uh, go to go to the the, the popular craft village Banwer, home of, home of the famous uh, kente cloth. Um, we're going to go to uh, the village of Entanso where you do the Adinkra stamps uh, that you can stamp on a cloth to create your own cloth. There's another car wood carving village there in uh, Kumasi. Uh, me meant to mention there's one in you know, there in Accra and we'll go by there and you know, also know that uh, we have a lot of things on the itinerary. So some of these things that may not necessarily always put on the slide presentations. Uh, but the side presentation represents a nice summary of what we're doing. All right, and the uh, third destination in Ghana is Elmina and Cape Coast. So we're going to be going to the Sinman, so the last bath where stolen African ancestors took their last bath. We're going to go to the Akoma International Academy of Arts and Science, and then we're going to do either the Elmina or Cape Coast Holocaust Dungeons. We're going to do a Cape Coast University uh, tour. So this will be the third university that we have on a schedule that we're driving through. Uh, uh, canopy Walk at Kakum uh, National Park, and for those who are not interested in going through the forest and climbing through the Canopy Walk, then you'll be able to just literally just enjoy yourself on the uh, beaches of One Africa and just enjoy mud bath, um, enjoy just a different thing. It's a health resort, so you can just really just enjoy and kick back. Uh, so we have One Africa Resort, and then which is on the beach, and then Carrick Hotel, which is a new hotel across the street. Uh, and Amica did confirm me that uh, she has hot water at One Africa, uh, so that's the only difference uh, as far as Carrick Hotel. Carrick Hotel have air conditioning system, and One Africa doesn't. Uh, we're on the beach at One Africa, and uh, we have nice, cool access. So those are the things that, um, you know, when we get to talk about hotels in Cape Coast, Elmina, Individuals will let me know if they want to stay at the Carrick Hotel or they want to stay at One Africa Resort uh, with Imacus, uh, where we have always stayed at. But um, our goal is always to make sure that we have alternate options if we don't have air conditioning in the room or a fridge in the room, which the Carrick Hotel has. And then the Carrick Hotel, like I was saying, is across the street, so you have to walk across the street to get to One Africa because everything is set at One Africa. So that's the sequence of what we have. And... I am on slide number 15, so I'm going to just go through a few more slides and then open up things for questions. All right, so uh, this part of the slide for um, South Africa is broken down into two, Johannesburg and Cape Town. So while in Johannesburg, uh, we're going to be going to the Lesedi Cultural Village based in the cradle of mankind, so uh, or humankind. So what is uh, shown is the different cultural groups in South Africa, and it's also that's connecting you to the culture, so that's ideal right there. Uh, Mandela House in Orlando West Soweto, uh, which is a natural mo national monument. Hector Peterson Memorial and Museum, the Apartheid Museum, the Old Fort at Constitution Hill, and we got a full day at Pilanesburg Game Reserve, an ideal destination for a day safari. Uh, lodging is going to be at the, the Patia Hotel Johannesburg, which is now the Marriott, uh, owned by the Marriott. So you'll see a link on the bottom of the presentation for you to click on it and it'll take you to the actual hotel that we have reservations for for November and we're looking to do the same for next year uh, for South Africa. All right, overview two of two. Um, and this is for uh, Cape Town. So District 6 Museum, learn about apartheid history, a township tour, Langa, Kile 2. Um, I'm just trying to pronounce this. I'm going to get this pronunciation of this other township. Uh, ferry to a UNESCO listed Robin Island where Nelson Mandela spent 18 of his 27 years as a prisoner there. A panoramic site from the top of Table Mountain. And so we are going to get into the cable car from the Table Mountain. So for those who are scared of heights and literally don't want to do it, it's absolutely fine. You can just wait at the bottom for us. Uh, same situation when I did a tour to Brazil, it was June 2017. We have a sister from Ghana. Out of the 10 of us, say that there's no way she's going to get on the cable car, and she wished us the best, which is fine. I told her this, you know, we're not going to die, and nothing's going to happen to us. We'll see you back in a little bit, which is like an hour, late, hour later. But she missed out on this an incredible just view, because once you're in the cable cars, these are only two countries I know with cable cars. I'm sure there are others. Uh, but once you're in these cable cars and you're up there, you just get an incredible view of the area itself. It's 
And if you're in like Brazil, you like you're seeing like small islands, you're seeing the whole city itself, and 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 you know you're going from mountain to mountain on this cable car. So those are things that you know for me personally, all the people are just very exciting, and we just look for the adventures. So, but we organize these tours where you have as much adventure, culture, history, all packed into one nightlife, networking, right? So we're here, uh, so we're going to stay at the same chain, uh, the Portilla Hotel in Cape Town, uh, which is the, uh, owned by the Marriott now. And you click on this one, and this one is a little, a few miles away from the, the waterfront, which I was hoping to get closer to. But uh, this is a good distance for other locations also. And when you look, when you click on the map, when you click on the link, you'll see all the things around you in Cape Town. Um, and that part of the area is just, you know, like this, a straight tourist destination. All right, so slide 17 goes into business, uh, which I'm going to stop there. I'll probably just give you more of an overview. Uh, but family, what I want to do is open up, and let me also get us to our website. I want to open up, and then all the things I talked about literally is just what we've talked about in the last uh, few calls, where you just click on the link as far as the tour that you're interested in, and then you get the full tour overview. So what we went through is a tour overview for Ghana and South Africa. So anyone that have any questions, uh, just get, press star six to unmute yourself and then give your name, where you're calling from, and your question. Our right, family, uh, we just went through, or went through half of the uh, presentation, the PowerPoint presentation that was sent uh, to everyone. And uh, use it as a way to do introduction and tour review. Out. Come on. Hey, uh, greetings. Yeah, this Warren. Um, I'm getting a little feedback. Is it okay, or what's, can you hear me? Oh yeah, I can hear you loud and clear. I'm actually not getting any feedback. Uh, your audio is coming in good. Okay. Um, one is for me the I was looking at to stay in uh, Johannesburg like another six days in Sandtown. Um, uh, in Santan area and Airbnb. So what what is time you need to uh, either change the return? Because I haven't confirmed it yet. So what is the latest that you would need, or is already the ticket for the return flight already confirmed? Uh, yes. Uh, what I sent you is what we confirmed for all tickets. Everyone that's traveling with us to South Africa has sent what we have confirmed at Delta Airlines. Now, if you want to stay somewhere longer uh, for different reasons, uh, that's fine. Well, once you give me a date, then I have to match it up with what the original quote was, and if it's anything over it, then we just let you know the difference. Uh, so always the sooner the better because we're traveling during the holidays, and any change of reservations would change. So the sooner the yeah. better. Uh, so. Okay. So that's one. Two, um, I sent you a piece to talk about because it's a – it's a, like a 16-hour flight, right, from Atlanta to Johannesburg? Uh, yes, exactly. Yeah, and it was, uh, I sent you a piece, and maybe the other people who are going, it's a piece on um, things you you got to need to look at in reference to a 16-hour flight uh, that, you know, the seats are hard and you they kind of um, crammed up. So I, I did a piece, and I don't know, I guess I'll put it in the, you said we have a, Facebook group for the South Af Africa trip. Uh, yes, exactly. And then once we get closer, say, example, two months before we leave or closer to a month, then we have our WhatsApp page. And then then that becomes a part to where we can talk a lot more about things like that. And uh, it will okay. be more relevant to people and people will be more attentive to it. Um, but, yeah, absolutely. Odd. And those are okay. things we go over. And then, um, you know, you give them recommendation to stay up and – and pack all night, and then when you get on a flight, you'll rest more. Uh, yeah, but, you know, we can definitely talk about different sequence and share. Most of the people that travel with me have traveled to Ghana with me in the past. Uh, sorry, excuse me, the people that traveling to South Africa with me, most of them have traveled to, with me in Ghana in the past, and, you know, they've been traveling. So it would give us a uh, situation where all of us can share our experience and things that work or we feel that didn't work. Okay, well, I, I just wanted to maybe send out a note to the people, whoever might be interested and want to stay like another week so I can, maybe we can split some costs in reference to Airbnb or something if somebody want to uh, stay another up till 
because that uh, be coming back on the Monday or Tuesday. Uh, we leave on the Sunday and we get back here on a Monday. Right. So uh, Monday morning. Uh, from Tuesday to Friday uh, and leave back out on a Saturday or Sunday. But if somebody, other people were interested, uh, I wanted to try to get with them, like you say, so we can get with you to see the return flight. So I just want to, how, how do we, you were saying the WhatsApp group, uh, but do we have anything established now? For all the people going to South Africa, they can communicate with each other. Uh, not at all. Um, um, not everybody's on the Facebook uh, group, and then people that are on the Facebook group are not. Most of them are not coming on the tour. So what? You know, so any inf- important information is uh, done on this uh, conference call. Uh, other people can hear you, and and then um, uh, beyond that is just doing updates. Okay. Well, you know, so um, okay. Well, let me tell them my, my name Warren Green and and. Uh, my email is uh, Warren G nine eight zero one two at gmail dot com. That's Warren W A R R E N the letter G nine eight zero one two at gmail dot com. Uh if you're interested in on uh interested in staying a little longer in, in South Africa we can we can talk that out. Uh, perfect, and then naturally, uh, um, I'll just send a message to update everybody that uh, you're, you know, that you know, based on what you're saying, because probably okay. half of the people probably won't listen to the call or won't be on the call. So, uh, yeah, so I got you. So um, I'll do that. Doc. I have everybody information in the group text in case we just need to send out one message. Um, but since this is something a little more urgent, then we can't wait for the WhatsApp group and things. I'll get that out uh, right. between tonight and tomorrow, and. Thank you. And, and just uh, let you know, and so on. Only one person so far mentioned to me because before we were going to additional countries, we were set to go to Zimbabwe, Botswana, and Zambia. I know it sounds like real nice, but it it, it put the price in where most of the people that wanted to go didn't want to go. Um, but um, one lady did mention that she still want to do some of those other things. So I will talk to her first, and and see um, and. You know, naturally, I've, you know, I have my business partners down there in South Africa, so you know, they can offer additional options for you. Uh, so you not right. really have to be set to where you're spending high costs as far as lodging and things like that. So it's something that we can definitely work out. Um, and you know, as I, uh, and then while we're on the, the call, just you know, want to let everybody know if you ever want to stay back longer in any country, it's one of the things I try to bring up as much as possible and encourage. And, and I've, I've worked a few sequences for a few people on other tours already, including upcoming tours. It's, um, it, it's if you can get a few days to stay in Africa, even if you just want to just go to another country, like say example, you want to leave from South Africa or Ghana, and then go to Senegal for a few few days, uh, or Nigeria, so on. We have you know people in those countries that can uh, connect with you. But uh, Warren, absolutely, uh, brother, uh, thank you for the heads up and. As soon as you get your dates clear, you can email or text it to me, and then I'll confirm that I got it. And I'll let our folks at the group booking know so they can just extend your day. Yeah, and I, like you say, I'll, I'll, I'll go on and confirm that I kind of yeah, waited, but I know what you're saying in the sense of the pricing, the closer you get, the more for the stay and changing tickets and stuff. So give me, uh, I know I got to finish up payment, and then so you think uh, – Three weeks, three to three weeks is, you know, that's a good time frame. Three weeks from now. No, it's uh, three months uh, before we leave. So three months before we leave is August, August twenty second. Uh, once once that day passes, I can't change the tickets. Uh, only thing I could do is change the tickets and take on whatever fees that they're doing which is still better than waiting until the last minute when you actually there in a country. So if you can do that within um, nine days, that will help because I got a, I have a few seats that I have to release based on people who, who um, you know, we had set up to come and they are no longer coming and they're going next year or doing something else. So just do okay, okay. uh, to this, this holler back at me by. Well, if it, yeah, I mean, if it's, a, if it's a, a more price, that's fine too. I mean, I'll, I'll do the best. I hear, I hear you know, you're giving me this. Three months in advance, that's a good price for a change ticket. And then if it's after that, then if it's some cost, then, yeah, I'm willing to pay the cost. I understand I understand everything you're saying. So 
I'll try my best to pull it all together. Um, you know, I have some friends there too in, in, in South Africa, so I'm trying to get with them and, and do so. If, if it's some extra fees, I don't mind. I mean, I know business is business, and I kind of waited long to get in in the first place. So, so I have no problems with that. But I'll try my best to to uh, meet your your requirements. Exactly. Uh, and then people change their tickets all the time at the last minute. Um, only thing that you know, I'm just letting everyone know. Example. Um, it uh, may be um, about three hundred dollars to change it once the ticket is fully booked, uh, which is about thirty days to forty five days is when sorry, about forty five days is when the goal is to pay off the balance. Once the balance is paid off and the the tickets is published and they're just they're out, um, that 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 kicks in the um, the 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 change fee of you know they have like the three hundred dollar change fee. But before okay. that time frame when before the tickets are paid for then it's something a little bit less, um, you know, you know okay. less yeah. during the, the three months to the one and a half month. Uh, but right. yeah, as you can see, the, the sooner, the better, because uh, they ch charge you for the route change fees and things like that also. So sometimes okay. it becomes yeah. ridiculous, especially during the holidays. Yeah. yeah. Got you. Thank you, bro. Uh, Absolutely. Definitely uh, and just looking forward to connecting with you. Uh, let me know if you have any other questions about the, the journey itself and if you're clear with that itinerary. All right, uh, perfect. Uh, all right, so Warren, let me meet you. All right, so family, you have lots of people on the call. Um, uh, what I went through a little while ago is a brief presentation um, using the PowerPoint slash PDF uh, attachment that was sent uh, on a conference call email. All right, so it's star six to unmute yourself for questions. All right, so I got slides number 17 all the way to. Uh, greetings, all the way to 24. That's talk about business. Uh, can you give you a name and where you're calling from? Any questions? My name is Kiana, and I am coming out of Michigan. Um, quick nuts and bolts question. I was looking at the application for the visa. And it said about your passport, and so am I to include my actual passport or copies of my passport? Uh, you have to put your. Uh, yes, um, you have to put your actual passport. That way, they can affix the uh, the stamp in the passport. Uh, so, uh, just send it uh, in priority or secure uh, mail, and then put a, a return envelope. Uh, prepaid okay. that way you can send your stuff back with tracking. So that's okay. ideal way to just keep track of your you know your document. Just make sure you have those. Yeah. I recommend priority okay. mail outgoing and priority mail return. And, uh, what would you say? I'm sorry. No, I said I recommend you send the uh, priority mail outgoing and then also put in a prepaid return priority mail envelope in the package and make sure you have both tracking numbers. And that way you can track your package to the embassy and track it back. And all of us need to okay. do that regardless because if anything happens, that tracking information is what will save you a lot of time. Okay. Thank you. Absolutely. Uh, so I guess you're ready to go and you have the flight itinerary that I sent you uh, to put in the visa package. Mm -hmm. Now I'm saying I sent you a flight itinerary. Yes. Yes. All right, so yeah, so that's the only other thing that you need beyond what you see in the visa email. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. Absolutely, uh, you're welcome. All right, our family line is open for questions based on our South Africa and Ghana presentation. And also what I was saying is that from slide number 15 all the way to Text 23, this talks about uh, business in Ghana and all the different business and things for those who are interested in business. So I'm going to continue on slide number 24. And also, if anybody have any questions, just unmute yourself and chime in. All right, so slide uh, 24 talks about building communities and securing land opportunities. So that's more so in Ghana as a goal from 2006 to now has been to learn about as much investment uh, project as possible. So I've 
taken us to Fianca, taken us to Garvey Town, Benu Village, and also connected us to different individuals that own land and you know, do our best to you know, connect us. And then we're just working on another project uh, where we'll just be able to use the energy of most of the people who want to live and do business in Ghana and just kind of set up to where it accommodates uh, what they're looking for more so than trying to connect people to a project that they have to adjust based on stipulations and things like that. So I've got some wonderful things as far as community development in Ghana, especially in the future. So we'll keep everybody posted on that one. And then all, and you know, whatever project we have, we'll just make sure that we have it on the website to where you can click on the link and check it out. All right, so 25 also talk about business, 26, 27, 28. So as I remember now, Half of the presentation is about us introduction and overview of the tours, and then the other half is about uh, this investment just to push that energy. So to not take up uh, too much of our time, decide to skip all of those things, and then encourage those who are interested to look through it, and then just you know, reach out to me, and then we'll talk about it. Uh, but definitely want to focus more about investments on the other conference calls that we have. Um, during the uh, fourth Sundays of the month or towards the end of the month that talks about repatriation investment, mainly talk about African diaspora communities and living and doing business there in Ghana. That breakdown is just where we're not cramming everything in the conference call. That's designed more for the tourists since most people are just coming for the tours and they're open to other things, but the tour is what we want to be clear on. So that's the uh, full presentation. The uh, last few slides just um, ask if you have questions and then just give you the contact information links and also dates of all of the tours that we're doing. So that's 31 slides uh, on the presentation. All right, so let me uh, get back to our Q&A. All right, so family, um, we're finished with this, the presentation as far as uh, the PowerPoints and I'm going to go into a few other things, um, website, Facebook, and YouTube. Uh, before I do so, I uh, just want to find out if anybody have any uh, questions, uh, press star 6 to unmute yourself. All right, so let me go back to our website. So on our website, uh, once you're on the website, it's, you'll, see, you'll see a link that says join our mailing list, and that's at the top left. And once you click on that, it just gives you a list of the newsletter, but also give you a link to also join the actual mail, mailing list. For the most part, everybody that uh, have the information, I'll put you on that email list that we, when we send the conference calls, any tour information that you have that detail. Uh, and then for people in general who want to add themselves, you can just add yourself. But mainly that list is for, for you to click on and see the previous newsletter. All right, and then just have a list of this, the support information on the website. Uh, one of the, the biggest one is the Ghana tour book. Uh, so, what I have is just a digital copy uh, via PDF and also image that you can just flip through the tour book to get a clarity of the program. And the uh, tour book program, this, it, it has investment section, as introduction, uh, talks about the different parts of Ghana that we're going to go to, uh, the universities, the schools that we're going to visit. So it's actually a program guide uh, versus giving me a piece of paper. You have the book itself. This one is the 88-page book. and for smaller tours like the Ghana, December, or South Africa in November, you may not necessarily get an actual book book. You may get a smaller version of that, which is a booklet based on group size because the book is, we're able to do the book because you know, when you have a big group, you know, you can, you, know, you have to have a minimum order for these books, and it's usually like 50. So we don't want to print you know, 50 books for a group of 15 people going to South Africa, so that's kind of the reality of the situation. But it's, it's literally just better to give you a booklet or give you some kind of program versus nothing else. So um, part of just being organized uh, and just making sure that you're, you, know, you, you have good energy during the tours is we do the T-shirts um, where whatever tour you're going on, it will say Ghana or South Africa tour. Uh, and you can just, we're doing a tour and there's a tour bag, uh, pens, postcards, and there's other documentation that we have that's uh, sharing with you. And then if you want to share with your family, friends, uh, you can share that with them. And the book, uh, just be careful because that's only one copy of the book. So 
Yeah. We're not able to mail you another version if uh, someone does get a hold of your book and take off with it. But yeah, it's a, you know it's a collection of just like other things that you collect. And when you come to our office, I have all you know we've done 16 tours. I have about 12 books. Because some of the tours we didn't do any books, uh, so the books range on my, on my tables from 2007 to 2019. And you, you know, you put them all together, and you'll see just the history and energy of just us looking to be as organized as possible to make sure that you have the best uh, connection on the African continent. And also, saying the best connection is also saying to you that also that um, I, some people assume about the hotels. But I tell people you don't ever have to assume about the hotels because we have it right in the itinerary before you even pay a deposit. But we don't have any five-star hotels on any of the tours. The ones in Ghana is two and three star, and the one in South Africa, the ones in South Africa, are three and four star hotels, uh, and it's based on the best accommodations that we can put together for a group of people and make it work. And we just tell everybody just to go with the flow, enjoy. If you have any issues or problems, uh, don't talk to anybody else. Just come see me and whoever else is with me, working the tour, including our partners. Then talk to us about anything, and we can resolve it and work it out. What we don't want you to do is insult us and embarrass us in front of everybody or make or make a scene in front of everybody else because it's honestly it's unnecessary and you're, you're complaining to people who cannot help you and they're also disturbing what they're doing there. Uh, so all these things are, you know, I tell people that the world that we live in, you're going to always have issues and problems and disagreements. The, the solution for me personally is how you handle that situation or, you know, talk and, and communicate. But um, for a, a world of this frustration and disrespect leads to this a continuous world of frustration and disrespect. So basically we're saying that we're not going to sit around and just like let anybody just violate or disrespect us. We're going to, you know, we're going to, you know, we try to be as professional as possible, but at the same time too, we have to de de defend our brand and defend our business what we're dealing with. And we're never put anybody in a situation where we just like rude and mean and disrespect with anybody, but we do ask people to control themselves because we do understand the world of frustration. And at the same time, too, yeah, Cape Town and Johannesburg is just part of the nicest parts of Africa I've ever been. But none of it is in America. And America flow of this business and how things work is completely different. And I realized, you know, just traveling on these tours, whether you go to Brazil, Ethiopia, Ghana, South Africa, or wherever, you know, it's a level of just dealing with the culture of how things are done in the country. And at the end of the day, everything is fixable and everything is, you know, you can work everything out. But just want everybody just to disrespect everybody else and be on our best behavior. And push come to shove, the, the worst scenario is like, you know, you're there on a tour for two weeks the most. So you can just always just complete the journey and just get back into your elements. Yeah. I remember I met a lot of people that wanted to live and do business in Ghana, and when they went to the country, they weren't exactly this excited about it. And I tell them, you know, I was like, you know, if you're not feeling that's fine, just enjoy the rest of your tour and, you know, and, you know, just kind of process it. And you never know, you may see it a little bit different as far as the country itself. You know, like, like certain parts of Ghana is real nice, and some parts of it is a little more rough as far as when I mean rough, I'm talking about like dirt roads or undeveloped roads or undeveloped parts of the country. But, um, both countries are, you know, been to South Africa twice and Ghana 16 times. You know, these are two great uh, representation of Africa, and you know, we're naturally not going to put you in a situation where you have health concerns or issues and outbreaks and warlord drama or anything like that. So, you know, what you're looking at is just a great presentation, and just want everybody to just enjoy it and take it fully advantage of it. Like I've been literally just. Just had to deal with just not being in Ghana. Just after being there in May and June, having a great time, and then just being back here, just in front of my desk, like every day, up all day, and you know, and you know, it's the sacrifices you you make, but it's like take advantage of it because it may be you know, some of us may never get a chance to go back, and and you don't want your last memories to be that uh, you know you were over the edge for no reason. Yeah, Bomani. All right, cool. Uh, go ahead, Warren. Yeah, um, one is, too, I have a friend. She has a uh, – Are you? can I send you information on, on, on tour guides or you already have all the tour guides locked in for South Africa? 
Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. With these business, you have to have all the stuff done at least about a year before you do it. So hotels, tour guides, bus, tickets, all have all been arranged. Okay, so but uh, I'll send you the guys' information so you can have. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, you know me. I'm always open for business and, and okay. if, if nothing else, no, networking is good. Yeah, networking is good. So absolutely, brother, you're gonna shoot that to me anytime. Yeah, and, and uh, on that note that you're saying, I think everybody needs to kind of do their own research every time I go to different places. I would add uh, Kenya and Tanzania on that list too. I love. Uh, Kenya and Tanzania, uh, that beautiful country there too. But um, to kind of, like you say, do the research, and that's what I always do when I travel outside the country, to do the research on the area, and and, and so you can kind of see, you know, what you, you're getting into so you can basically prepare to go. Because uh, like you say, it's, when you go outside the U.S., it's a whole, it's different. I've been to Asia, China. The, you know, other parts of the world, and it's, things are done differently. And that's the part a lot of us who've been, um, you know, adjusted to the U.S. way of doing things, we go to these other countries, it is kind of a, a shock, per se. And um, But if you do your research, you can prepare yourself better so that then you can, can uh, be able to adjust and have um, the type different resources and knowledge before you go versus you thrown right into something and you don't know how to, to adjust. Um, you know, like I know a big for me is uh, stuff on time. I'm a person here. It's like I'm, a, you know, anal about, you know, stuff started at 8. Like you say, the conference call started at 8, you know, I mean 7. I want people to be here at 7, 7 5, you know, but some people get later. So, you know, it's all different type habits and different personal preferences, uh, but if you do, I found if you do the research before on all the places you're going and how the transportation is and how this is and that, how the food is and so forth and so on, what neighborhoods the different hotels in, what neighborhoods the different uh, attractions we're going to, the weather, uh, knowing, you know, what you're dealing with, and then, you know, when you get there, it's like, oh, okay, you, you're more like, at ease versus not knowing anything before you go, and then everything is is thrown on you. So, so I hope all of us will do our research uh, beforehand, not just take your itinerary, but go deep into each day and and see where these places are that we're going to, uh, and things like that. So, I just throw that out. Absolutely, um, and um, it's best thing to do is be prepared, and the better prepare you are, the better your journey will be. And uh, all the things, you know, that's why I, I do itinerary to where everything's on itinerary. That way, you know, individuals can process it and, and and so on. But as you mentioned, all the countries, uh, that's why I reach out to let people know that um, you do any of these journeys. Uh, think about staying back extra week or so if you can, and you can just add another adventure to your journey. As you know, I begin to get into the age where. We just really do in one country, um, that way we can have a better focus. Uh, but I uh, appreciate uh, you, Warren. Our family line is open now uh, for questions. Uh, we're going to close in a few minutes. All right, so star six, so meet yourself. All right, so I got a message from Carla. So sh yes, Carla, I'm not sharing screen or doing any videos. Uh, what I want uh, individuals to do is to access the PowerPoint presentation, even if you do it later on. Uh, you can just go through the slides, uh, and that's all I was doing when I was talking with you, uh, which is the same as when I'm doing an introduction without the slides. It talks about the information that you see right there on the website uh, when you click on the tour link, and then as far as my introduction and so on, the link on the uh, website is about us. This is Sean. I'm calling from um, Macon, Georgia. All right, go ahead. Yes, I have a question about the international charger adapters. Where can you usually get the international charger adapters at? Uh, you get them from um, any kind of office or business store, like uh, a Walmart, uh, Best Buy, uh, uh, Amazon, and all you're doing is just uh, you're putting the search uh, universal uh, power adapter. Okay. And uh, then uh, you can also do a regular extension cord. 
uh, where you just uh, the main thing with um, a universal adapter is whatever country you go into, France, Ghana, South Africa, wherever, that adapter is universally set to where when you chest, when you adjust the universal uh, connection, you can plug it right into the wall. And once you plug it mm -hmm. into the wall, then you can plug in your extension cord. So and most of these are universal. And, in, and what you want to do also is note that you want to get something that has a fluctuation of power 110 to 220 volts. Okay. All right, sounds good. Uh, or is it Thank like you. 110 to 240. All right, perfect. I, I probably, yes, yeah, so hopefully I didn't confuse you with those terminologies or anything. No, no, you're perfectly fine, man. Thanks, man. All right, perfect. All right, uh, Jose, uh, you had your line muted, unmuted. Uh, yeah, I think so. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, I can hear you loud and clear. Yeah, I had, a, I, I had uh, got a warning from someone about the use of credit cards in Ghana that it's probably preferable to have cash. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes, as far as uh, credit cards, uh, yeah, best to use cash. But if you do use a credit card, it would be more of what someone like myself is using. Um, but um, Ghana is not so much the card country. You, you're going to use those cards to get money from your AT machine. Okay. You okay. Pay what you have with cash. I had heard that oftentimes the credit card companies will cancel your credit card if they see activity in certain parts of the world. So I was curious about that. Oh yes, absolutely. Been, been there many times. Um, what you have to do is um, call your your card company and just let them know you're traveling. Just put a travel note on there. Yeah, All right. and then whenever you swipe your card, just be careful of who and what you're swiping with because that can all automatically, uh, you know, mess you up. Uh, so, yeah. and travel checks are just a, a no-no altogether, right? Um, yeah, wouldn't recommend that. Uh, just bring cash okay. or bring um, a card that you can use in the machine and get cash. Okay, and what about cell phones? I understand that that is that there are extra charges uh, in sub-Saharan Africa, so. A few different situations with cell phones. Some people have a, a cell phone set up to where they can use their minutes there in Ghana and it's charged a little bit more and they use their data. Um, right. Um, but uh, what you can do is the simplest thing that I've worked out is you either get a unlocked phone and some people have phones like from AT&T AT that are unlocked. So if you have a phone that's unlocked, you can take out your SIM card and put a Ghana SIM card in there, which is about five oh, okay. Ghana. And then you can get the local minutes, maybe about five or ten U.S. dollars worth of minutes, and then call and use the internet. So you can either oh. use it on your unlocked phone, or you can, since my since my uh, business phone is not unlocked, it's a Boost Mobile. I have a separate AT&T unlocked phone that I bring to Ghana, and I have a Ghana chip in there. And then whenever I go back, I just add minutes to it, and I use it. And so okay. I have two separate phones. And some people have phones with dual SIM cards. And they can use that same phone. So, a few different okay. situations. And then when you right. the okay. hotel, you can use your apps like WhatsApp and uh, log into your email on the uh, wireless network at um, in both Accra and uh, Kumasi. In Cape Coast, the internet is a little bit trickier because both hotels don't really have internet available. So that's why I use my uh, local Ghana phone and turn it into a hotspot to where I can use my laptop and my cell phone to get internet. So those are like literally all of the options to kind of use phones and internet here in Ghana. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you. All right. Perfect. And then once we get closer to the um, the tour itself, we're going to be talking more about that and make sure everybody gets yeah. everything they need. Yeah. I have a while yet, so. <laughs> oh, yes. Absolutely. And, you know, there's uh, this preparation um, and just having all the information up front just get, help you organize a lot easier. All right, thank you. All right, perfect. And I'll have your your check and everything here. I'll be depositing this tomorrow and getting your out a uh, receipt slash invoice by the latest by the morning or tonight. Okay. All right. Good. All right, perfect. All right, so let me mute you. All right, everyone. We're getting close to where we're going to close on the call. For Star Six to unmute yourself, I'm just going to go over a few more things, and it's just. A lot of stuff, I uh, apologize, is repetitive, but that's really the only source of what we have is this information we send via email. 
newsletters, information on the website, Facebook, YouTube. Yeah. Right. So I've uploaded um, got lots of videos from the last tour. Right now, the videos are like our introduction on the bus. And for those who are looking at it or see it on YouTube, you'll probably see about seven or eight introductions and, uh, sorry, about ten introductions. And it was 30 of us. So as you can see, some people either didn't do the introductions or they didn't want the introductions to be recorded or they didn't want it to be uploaded to YouTube. So that's always absolutely fine because I only want people in recorded videos that want to have their videos out there because it's your personal life. And, you know, me, I am... I have no problem with cameras and talking and doing certain things and uploading online. You know, that's my life, but for some people it's not their life, and I respect that to the highest level. You may be working for a government department or maybe working for certain positions and you just don't want a bunch of stuff with you on there. So that's why you see the limited amount of, and at the same time, too, and then based on this, however you feel, uh, which is your own feeling, which we respect to the highest level again. And then always open for anyone who wants to do, you know, connect us with interviews or do anything like that. Uh, the goal is just to build documentation. And it's, the documentation is really this sharing our experience in Africa, uh, traveling itself, going to sites, enjoying great food, uh, connecting with people that used to live here, that live there now, telling their story. So once you get to the uh, YouTube page, it's youtube.com forward slash Bomani2007. Uh, the first thing you're going to see is uploads. Uh, then you're going to see a few different pre-organized playlists. Uh, Ghana May 2019 Journey for Lifetime Tour videos. So all the videos that I'm uploading, I also put it in that link as far as for the, the May 2019 tour. But everything is literally in uploads, all of the over 1,500 videos. So if you literally click on uploads and went all the way back, it show videos all the way up to 2006. So literally just, you know, that level of documentation. Other playlists are Africa Tours and Investment Conference Calls. So whenever we do a, a conference call, uh, the goal is just to edit it and upload it to YouTube for those who either need to listen back to the call or didn't make the call, or for those who are just coming into the mix and looking for the latest information. Uh, Ghana Repatriation and Investment Conference. So uh, the full two-hour conference we do, I literally record the entire conference. So a lot of times it's a lot of videos. Uh, and you end up seeing presentations from 5 to 15 minutes. And the goal of that is literally just to connect you with the source of just uh, our process of just living and doing business there based on other people's presentation and people giving you key information. Like lawyers will talk about the importance of legal documentation or legal representation. And you have people from the investment promotion uh, that talks about just investing in God at a higher level. Um, we have people talk about communities, and there's you know, many different things that deals with us connecting into the country and needing to know as much information as possible. Uh, tour member feedback. I try to put as much videos on here as possible and then just hear the different people feedback. Um, some, some of these are recorded by me, some are not, but then I just tell everybody that we're doing the videos with just to share their experience uh, and tell it in their own words. And you know, some of these people are also on YouTube, also on Facebook, so you can always just reach out to them and say, hey, um, did, you know, did Bomani pay you to, to, to give that, uh, you know, to give that review or, you know, or whatever? But that's what I'm saying to people that you know, do your research and talk to people, check people out, you know, and, and so on. It's all information is there. But everyone is coming to process and make a decision, and this is my best way of doing that. Uh, it kills the competition, and because you know, I just believe you, just, you know, you lay, you know, you lay your cards out on the table. And then people decide, like, you know, most of the conversation I'll have with people is, like, you know, I'm always just trying to lay out options. I, just, I, I really believe in options, presentation and clarity of information. That way you don't have to deal with drama and problems with people in business. And a lot of times those problems come from a lack of clarity up front. And it's kind of like a relationship, you know, when people lie to each other up front and then, you know, later on people start finding things out and next you know, tensions arise. And, you know, so that's how we keep the drama down. Uh, just like when you call me and you talk to me and ask me about anything, whether it's group size or whatever, or you know, or anything you want to talk about, honestly, without giving out any subjects, I have no problem with talking about it. Uh, you're making a commitment to join us, and we are committed to you that we want to make sure that you're clear up front, and we want to make sure that you're ready, and we want to let you know that we also got your back. And so we go still down as uh, a few more um, playlists, uh, African Holocaust Dungeons, uh, which 
the most videos I have is videos from the African Holocaust dungeons, a combination of Cape Coast and El Nina, more than any other videos that I have. And that's because we have some long presentations at Holocaust Dungeons and it's like literally you want to record everything and literally that's what we do, record everything. And it's, it's I think thinking that's one of the most important aspects of our struggle, this that foundation of us not being clear about what happened to ancestors. So now you can actually go to locations, you can talk with people that are historians or people that are scholars or people that are just guides itself, which you know, you can add them into those other mix because a lot of them, they're working at the university or studying at the university of Cape Coast or many other universities, and this is like real serious research and work for them. And in this, I have a few other entertaining videos and school supplies and things like that. So lots of videos for those who are into video technology and then lots of information to read on the website and lots of photos on Facebook. So once you're on my Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash Bomani, you can click on the photos and you'll see lists, and then click on albums, you'll see lists of albums just with us all over Ghana from 2006 to now. And then other countries that have been to Togo, Benin, uh, Ethiopia, Brazil, those will be in that mix also. All right, so family, uh, to not all everybody, uh, we'll come to the end and that's all of the documentation, all the things that we have went over and gone over and over. So anyone that have questions that they don't want to talk about on here, just email me or just call me and we'll talk about it and we just want to make sure that everybody's prepared. So uh, the line is open for last questions before we close. Uh, star six to meet yourself. Other than that, everybody, good night. Uh, good to connect with everybody and look forward to us journeying to Ghana and South Africa in the next coming up months and coming up year or two. All right, so let me unmute everybody. All right, family, so everybody's unmuted. Uh, everybody have a good night. Uh, thank you for um, being available for the call this wonderful Sunday. And um, I work on the recording, and I get it out to everybody, and we'll keep in touch. Thank right. you, Bomani. Absolutely. Good night. Good night.